G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Today we're going to talk a little bit about one of the more interesting narratives going around the AFL at the moment, and that's of course the Tasmanian bid to become the 19th license in the AFL, the 19th team in the AFL. You've probably seen that narrative a little bit in the headlines lately at the moment, but if you haven't caught up with it, we can discuss all that in this video today. The talk of expanding the league generally is kind of one of the more fun topics I feel like to discuss. The main questions being, you know, where and when, and uh, Tasmania seems to be a popular suggestion for a lot of people I think just given the fact that not only is it the only football state without a AFL team it's also a traditional footballing state as well so Tasmanians do like their footy and as such they want to be given their own AFL team. It's been an issue on the AFL agenda for maybe longer than you realize. I've did some digging and there's been talk about an AFL license in the AFL since it became the AFL in 1990 and when this truly became more of a national game. From my understanding, back in 1990, the Tasmanian state team defeated Victoria in a game and that would have been a massive upset considering, you know, how small Tasmania is and the talent pool that Victoria would have had available to them as well. That was sort of where the conversation started and then during the 90s that tour continued as the AFL AFL expanded their horizons, built a second team in South Australia and one in Perth as well. And those make sense in traditional larger footballing markets, adding a second team in both of those cities. That makes sense over Tasmania. And I guess the main concern with Tasmania is the, the size of the market. There's really not that many people there. And the concerns have genuinely always been about, you know, how financially viable would a team there be? So it made sense to, you know, prefer Perth and Adelaide as expansion points. But then again, Tasmania were beaten for their license in 2008 as the AFL decided to fill the 17th and 18th list spots with Gold Coast and GWS. Now, this is the point where things got a little bit more fractured in the relationships between the AFL and Tasmania. I believe a Senate inquiry was called with regard to the AFL's commitment to growing the game in Tasmania, to which, you know, Andrew Demetrio and the chairman, Mike Fitzpatrick, apparently didn't even attend. The sport in Tasmania, the participation rates, the junior participation rates were dwindling, and that is something that probably is a concern when the AFL wants to remain, you know, the major sport in a state like Tasmania. Supposedly, to that point, the participation rates for soccer for juniors were beating that of the AFL. Following the introduction of Gold Coast and GWS, Gil McLaughlin came out and said back in 2014 that the Tasmania license was probably at least a decade away. Further to that, it's also come out that it can't happen until the end of at least 2022, because that's when the current TV broadcast deal expires. So we can talk about what is happening now, and that has been the release of a Carter report, which was made by a former AFL commissioner and former Geelong president, Colin Carter, basically assessing the viability of an AFL team in Tasmania. So essentially weighing up all the factors, considering the Tasmanian government's business case for launching a 19th team, and ultimately making a recommendation to the AFL, what should we do about Tasmania? To sum up basically what the review found, it suggested that Tasmania did need greater AFL representation, and there were three main recommendations for how to go about this. Two of those recommendations, including relocating an existing club or a joint venture between Tasmania and an existing Melbourne club. And the reason why things have become a little bit heated between the AFL and the Tasmanian government is that the recommendation for Tasmania to have their own license, their own exclusive team, no relocation, was the third and least recommended of those three recommendations. McLaughlin basically said that between those three options, relocating an existing team or doing the joint venture option would arguably produce a more sustainable outcome and therefore should be considered before a 19th license. So that makes a lot of sense. Obviously, if you're taking a team out of Victoria with an established fan base, for instance, in North Melbourne, that's the always, always a team that gets mentioned in these conversations. You're obviously taking over 30, 40,000 members who already love the North Melbourne Footy Club and that would help the financial sustainability of that club versus starting a new club from scratch because we've seen with Gold Coast that doesn't always go to plan. Now based on this outcome the Tasmanian Premier Peter Gutwing, 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 Tatooine, he's basically come out and said that he's annoyed. This is 30 years of frustration for once again that has been treated with disrespect. So one very salty premier at the outcome of this recommendation. Essentially, he feels that, you know, Tasmania deserve their own license and that, you know, a compromise of joining with another existing Victorian side uh, is disrespectful. And further to that, he's kind of holding the AFL to ransom, suggesting that, you know, Tasmania is not going to roll over their new contracts, which involve you know, Hawthorne and North Melbourne playing games in Tasmania. Basically saying that from 2022, 
Tasmania is not necessarily going to let the AFL have games like that in Tasmania. So that's interesting. He's saying, make a call on us having our own team, or you can forget about, you know, Hawthorne and North Melbourne playing games in Tasmania at all, which is going to have its own ripple effect on engagement with the sport in Tasmania. So what happens next? Well, apparently a decision on the entry of a new potential Tasmanian team won't take place until uh, later this year with, and apparently it needs 14 of the current 18 club presidents to sign off supporting the expansion. Now, again, we touched on North Melbourne, but in terms of who would relocate, they're one that probably gets mentioned a lot, although I, I don't personally know if it's that well justified. Doing some research, apparently North Melbourne don't particularly like the fact that they're always lumped in with this relocation conversation when you've obviously got other financially struggling clubs like St Kilda and the Gold Coast. Perhaps a few years ago, Melbourne and the Bulldogs could be said for kind of struggling. Obviously, Melbourne nearly merged with Hawthorne back in the 90s there, but considering how well those teams are doing right now off the field, I think they're pretty safe. From this article that I've found, it suggests that North Melbourne only have a debt of about $450,000, whereas St Kilda exceeds $10 million. So basically, North Melbourne feel kind of incensed that they're the club that people are putting the crosshairs with regard to relocation. So you're kind of getting a feeling of what a Victorian club, even though they're maybe not traveling so well, how they would feel about having to move to Tasmania. Obviously, having some of these struggling, smaller Victorian clubs has sort of been present for a while in the AFL. Like I said, in the 90s, we saw you know, a merger between Fitzroy and Brisbane, and we nearly, nearly saw it with Hawthorne and Melbourne. That still remains the case, but my understanding is with these new broadcast deals, the AFL has been able to you know, carry these struggling clubs by just pumping money into them. One option that McLaughlin has come out and completely ruled out is the Gold Coast Suns relocating to Tasmania. He says the Suns are not moving from the Gold Coast, and that's definitive. So the AFL obviously sort of really digging their heel in there and don't want to give up on this Gold Coast experiment. And to be honest, I kind of understand why they would do that. I know there's a lot of negative examples of expanding into the Gold Coast market and teams, I think in the A-League in particular, that didn't go so well. But we've also never really given it a chance with the fact that the Gold Coast Suns have been a poorly run club throughout that period as well. I, I tend to think in my uneducated opinion that if Gold Coast had had the same level of success as GWS to this point, they would have comparable off-field success and probably similar members levels, I'm guessing. But anyway, back to the point, it does seem likely that the teams that would come into this conversation are teams like North Melbourne and potentially even St. Kilda. Now, actually reading the major findings of this uh, Carter report, it seems to make quite an impassioned case for having a team in Tasmania. It seems to be more about the, the moral of having a Tasmania deserving a team, the merits of that versus the actual financial analysis. It says the case for Tasmania is strong, particularly with the deep historical links to our game, and there should be a team representing Tasmania in both the AFL and AFLW national competitions. However, it does go on to say that the best form of that team is probably less clear cut, so, you know, not very helpful. It then says Tasmania is deserving of a team to represent the state on historic and fairness grounds, and most economic arguments can be overcome as long as government funding is secured. So it doesn't seem to be an issue around the, the financial side. It's basically saying all the concerns about Tasmania maybe not being a financially viable option, those can be overcome provided, you know, the government is helping fund it. It does highlight some risks of expanding in Tasmania. I think these are pretty good points to make. Obviously, the size of the Tasmanian population, just generally the interest in the sport, the fact that there's a north-south rivalry, so the way you'd brand that team is probably going to be, have to be an entire Tasmania team. There seems to be concern that, you know, having a Hobart team wouldn't necessarily capture the northern Tasmanian market. Player retention is probably going to be an issue as well, to be honest, and this is also the concern with, you know, having teams in Darwin or even, you know, parts of country, Western Australia. I'm sure those places are beautiful to live but when you're thinking about you know these 18 to 20 year old high draft picks from Victoria how many of them are going to want to stay in Hobart when they're getting contract offers to go join Collingwood and play at the MCG every week that's probably just going to be a realistic flaw in our game the fact that there's such an imbalance of attraction of playing in Melbourne versus you know these smaller states there's also the fixture, fixture complications but I think we've proved in the past we can get through with an odd number of teams and a buy and there's also the concern of diluting the talent pool obviously more kids get drafted that means frankly shitter kids are getting drafted into the AFL but I kind of think that problem will correct itself over time and you're probably getting maybe a development of you know youth programs in Tasmania meaning there's more kids coming out of that state through academies and stuff like that I feel like that problem will correct itself over time this next point I found interesting as well so according to the Carter review if you did a wealth ladder a Tasmanian team on its own would be the middle of the bottom third on that wealth ladder so you're in that mix with your North Melbournes and St Kilda's I'm guessing and obviously Gold Coast Suns and GW West would be in that glut as well 
but not the worst off team, which is also interesting. But it suggested that if you combine that team with an existing Victorian team, it would be actually in the middle of the ranking. So somewhere along the lines of a Fremantle, which is, you know, a team that does pretty well off the field. But as I said, the response to this from the Premier was that, uh, well, a direct quote, that immediate response from them, I don't think is good enough. Once again, they've attempted to kick the can down the road. We don't want to rent our own team. We want our own team. It's also worth noting that the Carter Report did suggest that the lack of a local team was the main driver in a lack of participation of footy in that state. And supposedly there wasn't as much, you know, uptake on North Melbourne and Hawthorne games in Tasmania. Interest in that apparently is dwindling as well. So there's a really obvious benefit to having a team with its own identity taking place in Tasmania. So what is ultimately the ideal outcome in this scenario? I'm interested to hear, hear your thoughts. I personally don't know if Tasmanians would fully embrace someone like a North Melbourne coming in and rebranding as the Tasmanian Kangaroos. I mean, I have, I'm from Bunbury and I think if, you know, North Melbourne relocated and became the Bunbury Kangaroos. Aside from the fact that I would never go for anyone other than the West Coast, there's no real appeal to me of thinking, oh, great, a Bunbury Kangaroos team. But if Bunbury started their own team, I would probably follow them a little bit differently. Knowing it's North Melbourne in a wig, basically, I don't know if I would have the same level of interest. The flip side to this as well is you've got to consider what is the ideal outcome of our game when it's, when it's done growing, if we ever reach that point. But my kind of view of the league is probably in the 20s or early 20s, maybe even 20 would be the ideal amount of teams for this competition. And at some point, you're going to have to shuffle those Victorian teams into other states to make it more balanced. If you're ever going to do that, it kind of makes sense to make the Tasmanian team the one that you shuffle out of Victoria because of obviously the financial risks and concerns, the fact that are they going to have enough members as a side in its own right. What happens from here? I think it's really interesting, but apparently there will be a decision made later this year. Will the AFL give in to the pressure of losing Tasmania altogether? Is Tasmania bluffing? Because obviously that's going to have its own impact on you know their level of AFL engagement in the state. And I'm sure that Premier sounds like a, a passionate footy fan. He's not going to want footy to die in his state, I'd imagine as well. Surely with the, you know, the tourism and uh, maybe not tourism in the COVID landscape, but, you know, the, the income and revenue generated from having football in the state, surely an AFL presence is still better than no AFL presence. One thing I'll say as sort of a final point is I do quite admire the passion of this Peter Gutween fighting for the best outcome for footy fans in Tasmania. I do dig his style and I think he's pushing really hard for the right outcome. And personally, I... I do think he might actually get his way. I think I probably prefer Tasmania getting their own license as a team. But then again, I think relocation talk will continue for these smaller Victorian clubs for decades to come. And with the lingering threat of COVID affecting broadcast deals, you know, no team is fully safe. But what do you think, guys? What should happen? Do you support a Tasmanian push to become the 19th team? Do you think we shouldn't grow any more as it is? I think could understand the arguments against it right now, given, you know, the COVID landscape is there's so much uncertainty. Do you think Tasmania deserves their own license outright? And do you think it would be prudent financially to support that? And if you go for a North Melbourne or St Kilda, you're probably hating me using North Melbourne as the example in this, but how would you feel if your club relocated to Tasmania? Anyway, guys, that is my thoughts on the current situation. It will be one to watch over the next few months, I'm sure. Appreciate all the support lately and all those who who have subscribed recently it means a lot to me thanks guys i'll see you somewhere very soon somewhere on youtube cheers